What's up everybody? Today we're going to be talking about hair system myths. We're going to be going over all the things that you might have heard about hair systems, all the things that may or may not be true, and we're going to dissect them one by one. I'm going to come and speak at these points from my own personal experience as well as from what some of the science, some of the research says. That way you can feel a little bit more confident about what is true and what isn't true because misinformation leads to making bad choices, uneducated choices. Knowledge is power, so let's go along for the ride. So the first one we're gonna look at is this right here. Okay, so hair systems are a replacement word for wigs and toupees. Now this is what a lot of people think and understandably so, it can cause some confusion because ultimately, Hair systems are not our own bio hair, are not grown from our head ourselves, right? So what is the difference between a wig or a toupee and hair systems? So hair systems are fully customized to every single individual. They're not something that you just go and buy in a store and you put on. You can generally tell when it's a, it's a wig because it doesn't look exactly right for the person. Hair systems are specifically designed for you. They, have, they all have unique bases uh, from poly to uh, lace um, that all have different qualities and systems based off of your way of life, your way of living, and to acclimate to the things that you do, including activity level, longevity, things like this, and uh, realism, right? That's another component there. So they're designed to fully integrate with your life and what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is a really important point to consider because uh, a wig might be noticeable and we always know the guy that kind of looks like he's wearing a wig. Hair systems are cut specifically for you. They're blended. They look natural if they're done correctly. They have the right density, uh, the right style of hair, including texture, uh, including the, the wave, the curl, all that kind of stuff. So they're much more discreet and they're supposed to be natural. Number two, myth number two. You can always spot a hair replacement system. Now, if you go and you look online at pictures of people wearing hair systems, some arguably, yes, you'll be able to tell that they're wearing a hair system. And especially if you're adept at spotting and looking at specific things, you might be able to tell. But for others, the ones that are crafted correctly to the person, that has a great blend, it's very, very hard to tell. And if a person knows how to style their hair correctly, knows how the limitations and they take good care of their hair, um, this is something that's almost indistinguishable. Now, I don't know about you, but I, on daily, I have not had one person know how I have acquired more hair. Most people think, because I was talking about it before, that I went and got got a hair transplant surgery, as in I got FUE surgery or FEU or whatever it is over in Turkey. Um, people didn't see me for a little bit of time and they thought that that's what I did. So that's how good it is. Now, number three, uh, myth number three, hair replacement systems limit your lifestyle. Now, this is something that I wanna say, it doesn't limit your lifestyle, okay? Um, there are changes, I believe, and there are things, there's a period of time, I'm even going through this right now, where I believe it does change the way you go about doing things because it's like, you're basically adding like a prosthetic to your body, right? If you lost a limb and you had a limb attached to you, there would be an initiation period before you go and you run, you don't become an Olympic um adaptive athlete because you now have a leg prosthetic that enables you to run. You have to learn how to walk again and then you have to learn how to run and then you can learn how to sprint, right? That's just the way it goes. And it's the same thing with hair systems. What I've found in my experience is that I'll be, I'll be frank with you. It has limited my exercise lifestyle. That's the only thing. And it's because I'm still figuring out how far I can push my hair systems, the bonds, finding the right bond. I've only been at this two months and I do what most people, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but I do what most people, more than what most people do right now with my hair system. 
I am aiming to get to the point where I can do CrossFit, like really, 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 really sweat for an hour to two hours per day and still be okay with the hair system and have it, the bond last for a very, very long time. That's what I'm working towards and I believe it's possible. So when people say that, does it limit your lifestyle? I am living proof that for 99% of the populace, that it is possible to go about your day-to-day life. I am pushing my systems to the absolute limit. I live in Florida in the heat, doing CrossFit, doing like working out every single day. It's just a thing. Okay. Myth number four, I believe we're on. Hair systems cannot, uh, you can't go swimming with a hair system. Once again, I am living proof that this is not true. I went swimming with my hair system, having it on for about three weeks at that time, having it on three weeks, going and swimming in a pool, enjoying it, having a blast. No one knew the difference. And I dried off my hair and went about my life. It's just not true. It's just not true. You can go about this. They're water protected or not water protected, but they're designed to be in water. We shower in them. We wash them. So why couldn't we go swimming in the pool? Now, what I will say, I don't know this for a fact, but I do believe that uh, chlorine is a pretty harsh chemical. Not the most harsh, but it's harsh. Uh, We can feel it on our skins and on our hair. So I do believe, however, that if you are going in chlorinated water or say salt water, that you want to make sure that your hair has, you're taking care of it. You know, I'd probably condition it after and, and I would just make sure that it's well nourished, but that it goes for normal hair too. So that's something special. Myth number five, um, hair systems irritate the scalp. Now, this shouldn't be true because they're supposed to be light and breathable, especially if you're wearing lace as opposed to poly, because they have breathability built into them. They're a mesh. They are like a fishing net. Not really. That's not what they are, but the fact that they are permeable, right? So heat, water can ventilate out of it. Poly, um, a little bit less so, but still, it shouldn't cause irritation. Um... The adhesives and bonding agents that are used to keep the system in place are hypoallergenic, generally, adhesives that are designed, they're medical grade, they're meant to be put on people and in people, I think. Um, The second part, at least there is, yeah, medical adhesives that are designed to be inside of us. So uh, here's the thing, though. Every single bond, every single adhesive, every single, whatever you use, you should do a skin test to make sure that you individually are not allergic to that particular adhesive and what is inside of it. Because here's the thing, worst case scenario, you are allergic to that particular one, you find a different one. However, the middle ground, which I think all of us will experience, and I'm going through this process too, is that not all adhesives will be the best for you. A great example of this is that I started my first system. um, To be honest, I don't even know. I can't remember what type of adhesive was used. However, it was so itchy. Like immediately I knew that it wasn't right chemically for my body. Like I left and I just, I just felt itchy. And as soon as I worked out, which, you know, there's sweat, right? So it's, it's, uh, I was sweating a lot. I just felt so itchy and felt so uncomfortable and I just knew that it wasn't right for me. I'm using right now Walker Safe Grip and that has been, I worked out the first day after and I was like, man, I don't feel itchy at all. Like this is fantastic. Like it's, I don't feel hot. I don't feel sweaty. I don't feel disgusting. So that goes to prove, right? So the first bond was not right for me. Walker Safe Grip is better for me. I don't believe that it is the best for me individually. However, This is just something to take into consideration, right? It's okay if you don't get the right one right away. Just make sure that you're testing your skin first. That way you don't have a allergic reaction because that's not good. But that's just due to our each individual chemistry and uh, our, you know, just like some of us might be allergic to peanuts. Um, Myth number six, hair replacements are too expensive and time consuming. So let's address the time consuming part of it. This goes back to the last point I made. Once you get the right adhesive, you know how to take care of your system. It is not fat, it, or sorry, it does not take a long time to take care of it. However, 
when you first learn, it's, it's a learning curve. It takes time. It's just like learning how to do math. If you just are starting algebra, it's going to take longer to solve a basic problem than if you know exactly the steps and the procedures and how to go about doing things right. So it's like a learning curve. It's going to take longer at first, but you're going to adapt into it. I've adapted more so into it and I continue, continue, continually am, wow, words, as I'm going along. And it's just becoming easier, faster, simpler, and I'm actually like the whole finding the right adhesive thing will simplify your life a lot. I hardly ever do touch-ups now. I actually haven't done a touch-up in like two months. Um, I've gotten a, yeah, a, a brand new hair system in the middle of that, but I just didn't need to touch it up because everything was working perfect. So are they too expensive though? Uh, this could be a thing. There are ways to make it cheaper. There, it is an investment. But you can't put a price on confidence, I believe, if it makes you more confident. Um, there are more expensive things to be spending money on. Um, let's put it this way. If you go out and drink and you spend 8 to $10 per drink, if you go out and you have, let's just say you have two drinks per night, you do it twice a week, you're looking at $40 a week, you're looking at over the course of a month, you know, around $160. I think that per for a hair system, you can get by with spending somewhere around four to five hundred dollars per every other month if you're going to like a hair club. If you do it all yourself, you can do it way cheaper. You're probably looking at like three-ish hundred dollars every two to three months. Um, so 150 bucks a month ish, maybe less, maybe a little bit more for this right here. So maybe even cheaper. It's not super expensive. If you are going out and drinking, like I said, you could be spending $160 per month easily, easily just on drinking, going out a couple times a week. I don't drink. Um, I don't go out and do that. So, hey, you know what? I am choosing to do this because it makes me feel great and I feel good and I have, I feel like it does a lot of good stuff for me in my business world, uh, I feel more confident, all that kind of stuff. Uh, num myth number seven, you can't wear hair systems in the sun. It's just not true. Um, you can go out, you can do all the things and there, there is something that I haven't had a problem with, but there, so hair systems are dyed specifically for our hair colors. And, um, if you spend a lot of time in the UV rays of the sun, it can actually strip the color a little bit and cause a mismatch, if you will. I have not experienced that yet, so I can't speak directly to it. However, uh, there are UV protectant sprays and you would want to condition your hair after that. And it's actually, I mean, that's what you should be doing if you have natural hair, right? You should be protecting yourself from UVs. Uh, just like, you know, uh, tanning lotion does that as well. And, uh, and then you'd want to condition after because UV rays are very, they're strong. They're strong, you know, they're a form of radiation. So uh, the high temperatures also just, it, I think it comes back to the, the thing about the adhesives as well, which is when, why I'm spending a lot of time thinking and talking and working through the whole adhesive problem is if we find the right adhesive, uh, being out in the sun, sweating more, all that kind of stuff will just, it'll all fall in the line. Because uh, for me, example, ghost spawn is uber, uber gooey and just nasty. It doesn't hold up well to exercise, sweating, the sun, any of that stuff for me. Not for everyone else, but that's just for me. So it doesn't work. So I can't recommend it for that at least. But I, I don't recommend anything in specific because of that point. Ghost spawn might be perfect for you. However, going back to that point, you can wear it in the sun. You should be fine. Um, you know, a lot of people just recommend wearing a hat and hey, dude, like there's nothing wrong with that, right? Like if you're going out in the sun, you're going out to a beach day, right? Just throw on a backward hat. It's a super chill look. It's a good look. Uh, you kind of look like a, like a frat bro or something. I don't know, not a frat bro, but you just look like you're chill and having a good time, which is generally like when we're out in the sun, that's what we look like anyways. So it's all good. Now, I think that that for today is more than enough points. Um, the point of these right here is I just want to make sure that you feel like you can go about your day-to-day -day life with hair systems and feel confident, feel 
charismatic, feel like it's possible and it's achievable because all this stuff, right, is we're talking about here, but this is actually about feeling confident and supported and feeling like we can make decisions. We're empowered to make decisions as holistically well men. So if you like this type of content, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, you can hit the notification bell after you do subscribe to make sure you see the videos. Uh, leave a comment below though, though. Like that means the most to me when you leave a comment and we engage and we talk about like these things as well as like the whole philosophy that I have about being a holistically well man. Um, I'm thinking about opening up this channel to also some other topics that are along the same line, not just exclusively hair, but like looking at other things in life that we feel like we can't talk about. So if you're interested in that stuff, please let me know in the comments below. Anyways, hope you guys have a great day. We'll talk soon.